Okay, we're going to be installing a 3036 unit. With a 3036 unit in the coil module, you will get this manifold, this U-shaped manifold. And what this U-shaped manifold will do, we'll take up two of the ports here later on. We'll take up two of these ports right here. Then that has an adapter that will go to a 5 8 inch line set. So we're going to have a 5 8 inch wide tube and we'll have a 3 8 inch small tube. That again comes with the coil module. Now also with your GIS 36 G110 you'll have this bag in here. We're going to be doing this in a later episode. This allows you to check in the field how the system is performing. It comes with a CD-ROM that we'll be installing. It comes with a USB port to serial port adapter. The wires that we'll use to adapt it, to connect the adapter to our laptop. You can get a close-up of that. That's the adapter. We'll be going through the procedure with this later. And again, that is included with every system. Now, most importantly, with this IS36G110, you will get a blue checklist. And that blue checklist is what we'll be going through when we start the system up. Very important that you follow the checklist with these systems. Probably 95% of the calls that we get are a result of somebody that didn't check everything off on the checkbox. So we're going to take a look now with uh, hooking everything up. Uh, we have a little bit more refrigerant line set that we want to, so we're going to shorten this right now. Garrett is going to show you the proper procedures here to make a flare fitting. So first step is we cut the refrigerant line with a tubing cutter. All right. All right, so we've, we've cut the narrow tube down. And by the way, they use the terminology narrow tube and wide tube as opposed to liquid line and suction line. So that's something you'll notice in the literature. Now, Garrett is going to prepare this for a flare. Okay, we're going to make our flare. This is a standard 45 degree flare. The tool we're using here is a little different. It does have a deburring device with it. If you weren't using this tool, if you just used a standard flare tool, be sure that you, you ream out to eliminate the possibility of any burrs in the system. You don't want any foreign particles to get into the system. Okay, so now we've made our flare. Now again, a good fitting here is crucial. Good idea to put on a couple drops of refrigerant oil onto the thread. And again, there's a little technique here that Garen is going to demonstrate for you to make you know, flare insulation go a little bit easier. I'm going to put the flare nut. So you're using two adjustable wrenches right there. What was the purpose of that again? Okay, what we're doing when we take the flare nuts off, mm -hmm. we need to back that up so that this fitting doesn't snap off from the side. It's just secured with two, I think, three eighths bolts there. But okay, it's very easy to break. So and that, that's just bad back news up. if we break that. It's not the end of the world, it's not scrapping the unit, but it makes for a lot more work All right. and you lose the charge. So back Very it up when you take that Very off. Very good thing to remember for everybody, back that up. All right. Now again, this is a 3036, so we have a U-shaped bracket that we're going to be putting on now. We're going to take up two of the ports. We're taking up two of the, I believe it's the suction ports on this. Isn't that correct? The 3 8 inch suction ports? Yes, the wide tube side. Uh, the wide, wide tube side, again, for people like me, it's the suction side. But 
Uh, they call them wide tube, narrow tube. This is the wide tube, so we're going to take up two of these ports here, and then there's a uh, 5 8 inch adapter on the other end, so we'll have a 5 8 inch wide tube and a 3 8 inch narrow tube. Now, if you'll notice, your discharge or your narrow tube mm -hmm. is hidden behind this adapter, so you're going to want to attach your narrow tube or your discharge side first to begin with. Okay. On this 3036 application, we need the adapter. It has it comes with the flare washer. You see the flare washer, you put refrigerant oil on your threads, mm -hmm. torque this to the specific torque, and then connect your 3 8 line. Which I believe with the 3 8 inch line is 25 to 30 foot pounds. We'll double check that. Bulletin 30-121 has that. That's correct, it does. Which is included with every unit. So now we can get the size for our... And by the way, if you should lose this, it's on tech.unicosystem.com. You can go to the bulletin sections and you can print these up. They're all available in .pdf format. So we're just hand tightening them right now before we take out the torque wrench. We want to get the size for our 5 8 line. Mm -hmm. See where we need to cut that line set. Before we can connect our gauges to the Unico IS36G110, we have to have a part right here which is not supplied, but this is readily available. This is a 5 16 female flare to quarter inch male flare adapter. So we're going to put that on to our service port to see if we have the nitrogen pressure. So I'm going to hand this to Garen. So we have about how many PSI, Garen? Around 140. About 140 yeah. pressure overnight. So we charged this yesterday before we left the job site. Uh, a little bit has leaked out through the uh, freighter valves overnight. We're going to uh, test with soap bubbles later to make sure that we have a nice tight system here. So we pre-charged it with nitrogen, which of course is common practice. And the next thing that we're going to do is take our torque wrench out and make sure that these are all set to the proper foot-pound setting. You're going to start off with the, uh, which, which size are you going to start with, Garen? This is the 29 for the larger 5 8 flare okay, nut. Okay, this is the 5 8 flare nut. This is going to connect our wide tube connection. And you're going to start this off with the crescent wrench. And backing it up, just like we said before, so... Torque. So we just hear that click right there. That means it's set to the proper torque setting, which in this case is what, 35 pounds? Uh, this on the larger line, it was, I believe, 45 to 45. 45 to 50. Just to okay. make sure that we have a tight fitting, Garen here is going to take some soap bubbles. And uh, if, of course, if there is a leak, we'll see a bubble start to form. So, so far, no leaks. I can show what a leak looks like here. You got to see what a leak looks like. We're tightening, we loosen the Schrader valve here, and you see the little bubble start to form. And we really need to do this for every one of the connections to make sure there is no leaks because with our 410A, with up to 450 pounds per square inch, it's very easy to leak out six to ten pounds of refrigerant. Any bubbles, Karen? I don't see any. All right, great. That means we got a nice tight connection. We torqued it to the proper setting. And we'll do the same for the unit upstairs <laughs> in the we'll attic. Charge in overnight, and now we're dumping that up, purge out the system, and we're going to vacuum it to at least 500 microns. And we turn that on and. Open your gauges all the way up. And still a little nitrogen residual in the, in the lines. And that's what we're hearing right now is yeah. the nitrogen. It's, it'll puff a little oil out when we start it like that. Now we leave it and 
until we get to 500 microns. 500 microns. So that takes about an hour? Uh, getting this line set and it was nice and dry, it would probably take half hour, 45 minutes possibly. Okay, but to be on the safe side, we'll probably let it run for an hour. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Okay, we've uh, evacuated our system down to 500 microns. Uh, so now we're going to shut the valves off. We're going to shut off the valves here. We're going to shut the pump off. So we've open up the liquid line. Open up the liquid line again. This one has one liquid line. We're using an Allen wrench, and I believe what size is that, Bill? Five millimeter. Five millimeter. We're opening that liquid line up first. Now this one has two suction lines, excuse me, two uh, wide tube lines, again to use the Yargo claim of terminology with this, because we're using two 3 8 inch lines through a manifold to connect up to a 5 8 inch line set. Okay, so now we're opening up the first of the suction lines. So all three are open now. Okay, so we've got all three lines, the one liquid line and the two suction lines are all open. So what do we show for our, our pressure now, Bill? Um, we're showing 130 PSI. 130 PSI, so that shows we have a nice tight system. Now we don't have the system running yet. We'll check it again once we have it up and running. So this particular unit, the uh, G110 or IS36 G110, has a maximum line set. It's pre-charged to 100 feet from this outdoor unit to the indoor unit. Now we can actually extend that to 164 feet. Now we're tightening the bonnet and cap here. Okay. And we're all ready to go on to the next phase.